It's no coincidence that the inner planets of our solar system are rocky, while the outer ones are mostly gaseous giants. This phenomenon is caused by a natural divider of worlds known as the Ice Line, a boundary shaped by the influence of the Sun. In Greek mythology, the Sun is central to the town of Icarus, a story illustrating how boundaries shape destinies and will serve as an apt analogy in helping us define the Ice Line. Icarus had wings designed and fashioned from feathers and wax by his father, Daedalus. Intoxicated by the exhilarating freedom of flight, he ignored his father's warnings and flew ever closer to the sun. As he soared higher, he crossed an invisible boundary, where the sun's heat started melting the wax, holding his wings together. Realising his peril too late, his wings disintegrated, and he tragically fell to his death into the sea below. This dramatic moment, shaped by the harsh realities of the physical world, has parallels within our solar system, where the effects of the sun's heat diminishes the further away from the sun you are. Beyond a critical point, a boundary is crossed, with temperatures dropping low enough for volatile compounds like water, ammonia and methane to change state into solid ice grains. This critical point is the ice line. Just as Icarus crossed his invisible boundary to meet his ultimate destiny, the ice line defines the critical boundary that determines a planet's destiny. Depending on which side of the ice line a planet forms, the volatile compounds will either condense or not, shaping either a gaseous or rocky planet as a result. Imagine the early days of our solar system, around 4.6 billion years ago, when the young sun was surrounded by a dense, swirling disk of gas and dust. As the sun ignited, its radiant heat spread through the surrounding space, creating a gradient of temperatures. Close to the sun, the searing heat kept most materials in a gaseous state, while further away, temperatures dropped low enough for volatile compounds like water, ammonia and methane to condense into solid ice. Between these two extremes lies the invisible boundary known as the ice line. Inside it, the volatile compounds are in a gaseous state due to the intense heat from the sun, where the solar winds sweep them away, leaving only metals and silicates. These start coalescing into planetesimals that eventually form the rocky inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, whose compositions of metals and silicates make them the rocky world we know today. Beyond the ice line, a different story is unfolding. In this colder region of the solar system, volatile compounds of water, ammonia and methane are condensing into ice, whilst being fed from the volatile material swept out from the inner solar system. With such an abundance of material, the mass and size of the planetary embryos grow as their icy cores grow larger and larger, they reach a critical mass where their gravitational pull begins to attract and hold onto the surrounding hydrogen and helium gas from the protoplanetary disk. From this swirling mass of ice and gas, the gas giants of Jupiter and Saturn emerge, along with the ice giants of Uranus and Neptune, each with their thick, volatile, rich atmospheres. Today, the ice line is located 748 million kilometres from the Sun, but evidence suggests that during the formation of the solar system, it was much closer at 404 million kilometres. Between Mars and Jupiter lies the asteroid belt, a region teeming with hundreds of thousands of rocky and metallic remnants from the early solar system. They are record keepers of the solar system's turbulent history, offering compelling evidence of the ice line's role in planetary formation. Just like the planets, their distribution within the asteroid belt is not random, where the influence of the ice line can be seen. Closer to Mars, the asteroids are primarily composed of rocky and metallic materials, similar to those that formed the inner planets. Further out, closer to Jupiter, the asteroids become more carbonaceous and icy, a transition that reflects the conditions beyond the ice line where volatiles could condense and accumulate. 
The distinct distribution of bodies in the asteroid belt strongly suggests that the ice line during the formation of the solar system was located in this region of space at approximately 404 million kilometers from the Sun. These ancient remnants of rocky asteroids near Mars and icy carbonaceous asteroids near Jupiter may bear witness to the dynamic forces that shaped our solar system billions of years ago but it's the Tower of Icarus that serves as a poignant reminder that boundaries, whether in myth or in science, define the limits of possibility. Just as Icarus faced the consequences of flying too close to the Sun, the ice line's distance from it was a critical boundary in determining whether a planet was rocky or a gaseous giant.